What's going on? Welcome to this Alpine R Series component speakers installation video. This install is episode one of my complete overhaul of the mediocre stock sound system in my 2020 STI. Replacing the weak stock speakers is necessary if you're hoping to push any sort of power to them beyond what the stock head unit provides. Be sure to check out the video description for links to everything you see me using in the video and other useful information. Let's get to it. I've selected these Alpine R-Series component speakers for my STI. They handle a lot of power, they're of high quality and are reasonably priced. And since I already had a pair of R-Series coaxials, they were the perfect choice for me. In the box, you're gonna find just about everything you need for most custom installations. You'll find two six and a half inch woofers with a nominal impedance of four ohms, this is a solid speaker, but it is very lightweight for as powerful as it is due to its strong neodymium magnets, which also helps them stay compact as a whole, which simplifies some installations. The kit comes with the two corresponding tweeters, which are ready to be surface mounted and can be angled towards the listener. It also includes external adjustable crossovers. The crossovers will ensure that the tweeters only get the high frequencies that they're meant to reproduce. Between the tweeters, the crossovers, and the mounting hardware, you can install the kit many different ways. You can use these grills for surface mount applications and it also includes some brackets that may come in handy depending on your goals. This bracket allows for different mounting configurations of the tweeters and of course you have the hardware you will need for most installs. You also get some other accessories that may simplify your install like speaker rings, 3M mounting tape and zip ties. I will be installing these speakers in my SDI which already has factory tweeters and wiring in place so I will not be making use of most of the wires that come with the tweeters and the adjustable crossover but to avoid cutting factory wires I got these wiring harnesses that will allow me to make the tweeter install plug and play. So I want to talk to you briefly about the beauty of these external crossovers. So here we have the factory tweeter right here. And the crossover for this tweeter right here is built into the tweeter itself. So you can see this whole white portion up here. That's the crossover function built into the tweeter. So the factory wiring is actually going to feed a full signal to the tweeter. And the signal is going to go through this capacitor right here. And that's going to filter out all of the low frequencies that this tweeter cannot reproduce. The thing about it is that it's compact, it's cheap, and it's easy to make, but it's not adjustable in any way. So if your tweeter is too loud or too low, you may have to figure out other ways of making the tweeter as loud as you want it. You might have to install an L pad and that's just work that I don't want to do. So you have these crossovers like the ones that come with the component systems and you're going to feed it the full signal from your head unit if there's already wiring in place or plug it directly to the woofer and then the crossover will feed the filter signal to the tweeter. But the beautiful thing about these is that you can slide them up like this and now you can adjust it. You can adjust it plus three decibels leave it at the baseline zero decibels or go down to negative three decibels so you can actually tweak it exactly to your liking so your highs are not overpowering your system. As you can imagine, we can't just drop the tweeters in a car without securing them somehow. You can get speaker adapters like these that allow you to mount the tweeters in the proper factory location. These are specific to the WRX and STI and they come with pre-cut holes. I had bought these before I settled on the speaker kit so these holes are far too small for the Alpine tweeters. Thankfully, I can easily cut them to size by measuring the tweeters and then using a handsaw to cut out the properly sized hole. You can avoid this by simply measuring the tweeter ahead of time and then ordering the proper adapter. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the adapter that I bought and solder it to the input terminal right here. I'm going to cut it right about here and then solder it and that way I don't have all of this excess cable. I'm using a very simple inline splice that anyone can easily learn. First, I'll cut the cable to my desired length, making sure that I leave myself enough wire to work with. I'm also cutting the ends off the adapters. I'm using heat shrink tubing, which you can find at Walmart or auto parts stores, but you can also use high quality electrical tape. After sliding the shrink tubing, I'll go ahead and strip about half an inch of insulation off the ends of the cable. To do the inline splice, simply intertwine the strands of the cable together, as you see me doing. Make sure that you pay attention to the polarity of the cables. A cable with a black stripe usually means that it's the negative cable, so check that twice. Use a soldering iron to heat up the exposed wires and then melt the solder onto it. Once that's done, simply use a heat gun to shrink the tubing over the splice and then you're good to go. Like I said, the cables that come with the tweeter are long to support different types of installations. Because I'm using the existing cables in the car, I don't need long cables. So I'm going to do the same thing with the tweeter. The only thing that I will advise is that if you're going to be cutting cables like this, make sure that your components work before you do, as that may save you a headache. 
So let me show you what we're left with here. Again, this is the factory tweeter. And all of this right here is exactly that, except that this is an external crossover, not built into it like the factory tweeter. And this is gonna allow us to set our tweeter volume to our preference. As you can see right there, it says input, and right here it says tweeter. So for the input, all I did was solder it to that tweeter adapter made for my car. And then the tweeter, well, I cut those cables because they were really long, and that's entirely up to you how long you need the cable or how much cable you wanna leave there. This is your custom installation, so don't be afraid to customize it at will. Because there's plenty of room under the tweeter, I'm just going to use that 3M tape that came with the speakers to secure the crossover to the underside of the tweeter. There's not much to it, just clean the surfaces with alcohol and then use a strip of tape to secure the crossover. This is just what I did. You may have a better idea for placement, but in this car this works just fine. To install your new tweeter, simply pry the grill off with a panel removal tool as such. Use a shorty Phillips screwdriver to remove the two screws and then disconnect and remove the stock tweeter. Take your newly built tweeter and then plug it in and simply secure it with the screws. I'd recommend you leave the screws off while you test the decibel levels on the tweeter so you're not having to remove all this stuff again to change it. The jumpers come in the plus three decibel setting, but after testing it, I found that it was too overpowering and I finally settled on the minus three decibel setting. This is entirely up to your own preference. Angle the tweeters towards the listener and then reinstall the cover and you're done. As I mentioned earlier, I already had the coaxial version of these speakers installed in my 2017 WRX and I made a detailed video on that a while back. Since the installation is the same and to save editing time, the following is an edited version of that video. The only difference is that for my current installation, I installed the component version up front and the coaxial version in the rear. The installation uses the same adapters and brackets, whether you're installing the components or the coaxials in the front or in the rear, but I did add some edits to clarify some information. So here I have a couple things that you're going to need to make the aftermarket speaker a little bit more like the OEM kicker upgrade. So that's an expense that you're going to have to take into consideration. This right here is just foam tape, okay? And I'll show you why you need that in a second. But this will allow me to install the aftermarket speaker onto the stereo without actually having to splice into factory wires. So you'll have to get one of these and they come in a set of two and they're pretty cheap. And you also have to get one of these, which is a bracket to make the speaker fit in the opening of the door like it's supposed to. So the bracket, you can see it right there that it's angled. The speaker itself comes with some brackets, but it's not going to be good enough for the car because the opening for the six and a half inch speaker in the car is actually pretty recessed from the actual door panel. So you need something like this to push the speaker up more towards the door panel and to actually angle the speaker upwards so that it's pointing towards the listener. So you need something like this and of course your speaker will go in like that and then before you install the speaker you take this tape and you put it all the way around the speaker right here that prevents plastic on plastic there's another thing that you may notice right here which is the foam on the outside of the speaker that's another expense that i recommend and that's a speaker ring kit there's several varieties out there but they all work basically the same you'll have one ring that'll go around the speaker just like these right here you'll have another ring that'll go behind the speaker right here so that you can mount it against the panel on the door and you have another piece that'll go against the metal behind the magnet of the speaker and that's going to ensure that your acoustic energy is leaving where it's supposed to that you don't have wave cancellation and it's going to ensure that you can absolutely get the most out of the sound skins and installation because this is a universal speaker of course you're going to have this bracket that comes with it it's going to allow you to mount it in different configurations depending on what car you have for the wrx we don't need this one right here all we need is this speaker bracket right here so the first thing i'm going to do is actually i'm going to put some of this foam tape around the circumference of the speaker The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the speaker and actually put it in there. But the speaker is actually not going to fit because these little clips right here get in the way. So those are made to break off because these are universal. These are not just used on the WRX. They can be used in other models. So they add these little tabs so that you can install smaller speakers in here or bigger speakers. So all you need to do is snap those right off. Once you do that, you'll have no problem putting the speaker right on there. 
So what we're gonna do is we're gonna align the four screw holes with four of the mounting holes on the bracket. So once you do one, you can align it easily. I actually want this to be near the bottom, so I'm gonna rotate it. There we go. Once you have it exactly where you want it, then you can go ahead and put the other screws in. These screws right here came with the speakers. They're in the hardware kit of the speaker. Once you're satisfied, they're tight. You flip it over, you're gonna notice that some of the screws are actually protruding quite a bit. So that's not gonna work. The speakers didn't come with smaller screws, so I just used those anyways. If that happens to you, then all you have to do is grab yourself some of these diagonal cutters and just cut the screws off. So I'm not gonna worry about putting foam around this because this is gonna actually go over the sound skins and the sound skins already decouples that from the metal. So the next step is just to plug in the wire cable to it. You don't have to worry about which is which because one is big and one is small and these come keyed to it. So all you have to do is match the size. There we go. So you may have noticed that the OEM kicker upgrade has the cable already on the outside of the speaker like this. Obviously it's because the cable on the car is actually on the outside also. So it needs to be like that. The speaker brackets that I got did not have that access hole because again, these are universal and meant to be used on different types of cars. So they didn't have that access hole. Luckily it's pretty easy to do. So all I did was I used to drill and I drilled a access hole right on the side, roughly in the same spot that the OEM kicker upgrade had it. So now the cable can just sit right here, just like this, and it doesn't have to be pinched on the outside like that. It might be something that you wanna do before you even put the speaker in there. If you don't have the sound skins or any door treatment, obviously this is gonna be metal right here. If you're down to the metal right there, you do have to put in some sort of decoupling from the plastic right here behind the adapter to the metal right here. So some of that foam tape that I showed you earlier will do the job. I'm not gonna do that because obviously I have the sound skins on there and the sound skins is butyl and closed cell foam. So it's already doing that decoupling for me. So my speaker is just gonna go right on there. So I'm gonna utilize that little hole that I made for the cable, put the cable there, and I'm gonna line up the speaker like this. Now, here's the important thing. The speaker is gonna sit just like this. If you notice, this side is very narrow and this side right here is pretty wide. And the reason that is, is obviously so that the speaker faces more towards the listener and less towards your feet. So make sure that you keep that in mind when you install the speaker. Also, if you're installing a speaker like this one where you can angle the tweeter, angle the tweeter upward towards the listener because high frequencies are very directional unlike very low frequencies. So you'll definitely be able to hear better if they're pointed toward you. Do that like that, and that should be good. And you can go ahead and use the same screws that came with your stock speakers. And of course, you can just plug in your speaker. All right, so if you don't have sound skins like I do right here, this plastic piece will sit right here on top and you can create a rattle between the plastic piece and the metal right there. So make sure you wrap this connector right here with foam tape so that it doesn't rattle. Now we no longer have a rattle point. I've gotten to the point where I need to tell you something very important. The speaker adapter kit that I got, and I don't know if there, there's others or not, but this is definitely one that most people get. This speaker adapter kit right here actually has the same adapter, the same exact adapter for the left and the right. Obviously, if it's angled like this, you cannot have the same adapter to the left and right because the screws are not gonna align. So if you actually align these screws, these screws are not equidistant. These are actually offset a little bit. The actual adapter is only gonna fit one way. So if you fit this adapter on the left side, the driver side, the way that it's supposed to sit, just like this, with the speaker holes aligned to the speaker, you're gonna actually have the speaker facing the wrong direction. I'm not sure what gives here. I thought that I got a bad kit. Then I went online, did some research. Other people had the same issue. But the fact of the matter is that that's how you're gonna get it if you order this one. So when you align it, so that it's facing exactly like I have it right now, one of your speaker holes is not gonna align with a bracket. You're gonna have to drill a pilot hole for a screw. So you might have to get a coarse screw and then drill a hole right where the bracket would go. And you're gonna drill a small hole right into your metal right there and then secure the bracket through that hole. 
came across that problem and I wasn't recording. There's not really much to show. All that you're gonna see is that the hole, it's actually this one right here, it's not gonna align with the bracket if you angle it right, just like this, this is right here. So that hole is not gonna align with the bracket, so all you have to do is right in the middle of the bracket right there, drill a pilot hole and then use a coarse screw to secure the bracket in place. Really not a big deal at all. With new speakers in the car, now I'm ready to install an amplifier kit, a line-out converter, and a couple of amplifiers to drive it all. So be sure to save this playlist to see the whole install to completion. That's going to do it for this video. If it was useful to you, don't forget to give it a like and consider subscribing for more content just like this. I'll see you next video. Take care.